Hi guys, it's Miss Simone, your English Literature Teacher. Today, I'm going to explain to you the PowerPoint I've created about how to analyze Thomas Hardy's poetry or any poetry in seven steps. Okay, why do people write poems? Poems are short stories that can be memorized. People who lived centuries ago often couldn't read, but they could listen and repeat the stories that they heard. And it helped if these lines rhymed, okay? Poems may contain riddles, stories within stories that have a meaning or a purpose that we can relate to or learn from. This is why poems are interesting. What's special about poems? Unlike a song, poems focus on the words and only the words. There isn't any music to distract you from the meaning. They are used to express profound, this means powerful, profound meanings or very strong emotions. Sometimes these words cannot be put into a tune. They make you feel like <clears throat> laughing, shouting, crying or whispering. All those kinds of things that you can't put into a song. So, why do we need to analyze poems? We have to analyze poems to understand what they mean and then so we can appreciate what they say to us. They're, they're like a riddle, a bit of a puzzle. We can take the time to explore our own experiences when we read poetry. It takes us a while to understand it, so we have time to think about ourselves and what we can learn from the author. So how is their life lesson useful for our lives? We think about what lesson we can learn. Okay, before you analyze, guys, learn about the author, when the poem was written, and the place the author came from. This is all context. So I've already done a little bit of, uh, a little bit of this with you with the Who Was Thomas Hardy PowerPoint. So you can use this when you analyze the poems. You also need to have an open mind and be able to reflect on your own experiences and the things that you've learned about uh, literature, poetry, history, all those things that go into analyzing a poem. What are the seven steps? Okay, summarize, organize, visualize, analyze, sympathize, historicize, and advise. Okay, step one is summarize skimming skills for poetry. You might have already done skimming skills in English. So read the poem slowly to yourself. Then look up any words you don't understand in the dictionary. Be careful to make sure you consider all meanings. If you don't consider all the meanings, then you might have the wrong meaning once you start to analyze it. So consider all of them. Okay, focus on what happens. So just, just the verbs. Only the things that are happening from beginning to end. Okay, let's see what we can do with this now. This is the poem that we'll be analyzing. I look into my glass. Okay, here we go, guys. Look into my glass and view my wasting skin and say, Would God it came to pass, my heart had shrunk as thin. For then I distressed, by hearts grown cold to me, could lonely wait my endless rest with equanimity. But time to make me grieve Part steals, let's part abide, and shakes this fragile frame at eve with throbbings of noontide. Okay, what words do we need to know? Distressed. This word was actually created by Hardy. See how we have distressed? Two lines down we have rest. So he created this word to rhyme with rest and it just means not distressed or not worrying. Equanimity means a calmness or a self-control in the face of a challenge. Grieve means to mourn or overcome sadness, like if, if someone passed away, someone in our family or someone we cared about. Abide means to follow. Throbbing, to feel a pulse, like if you've been running and you can feel your heart beating. Noontide is just a fancy word for noon or 12 p.m. Okay, so what happens in this poem? Let's have a look at the verbs. Looking, wasting, thinking. So he's thinking about 
what's going on. Grieving, shaking, and throbbing. Okay, let's turn this into a sentence, guys. A man looks into a mirror and thinks about his age and how grieving, perhaps for a loved one, makes his body shake and throb. Okay, the next step, organize key words. So this is like scanning skills for poetry. You're analyzing specific words and specific things that seem important in the poem. Okay, read it again with other students. Decide upon the most important nouns you can read. People, objects, and places. Unpack the meaning of the noun clauses. So a noun clause could be something like my big fat cat. Something that you can put uh, a comma, a colon, or a semicolon in front of it or behind it, okay? So you analyze the noun clauses with the surrounding words like adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. And next you put the words into context. You figure out what they mean in that sentence and then in the verse. So you're taking one word and you're expanding the meaning to the whole verse. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. What are the most important nouns? Let's just list them anyway. So the nouns are glass, skin, heart, rest, equanimity, frame, eve, throbbings, and noon. Okay, so the ones that are repeated or made into a subject are the most important nouns because they're given the most attention. You come back to them as you see them in the other verses. Okay, here we go. Heart, equanimity, frame, and throbbings. Okay, unpacking the noun clauses. My wasting skin. So he's got an aged look. My endless rest. I'm assuming that this means death because it's endless. Okay, and uh, the one that links to this one is with equanimity. So I'm assuming that this means accepting death. So it's being calm and accepting death. A fragile frame at Eve, an aging body, and Eve meaning towards the end of the evening, almost till midnight. So after Eve, it's the next day and it's a new beginning. So Eve means upon death's bed, throbbings at, at noontide. So if Eve means towards the end of life, noon means in the middle of someone's life. So their, their life um, at its peak. So anyone between their 20s to 40s. So he, I'm thinking he means his heart beats the same as it did when he was young. So he's remembering how young he used to be as well. Visualize. Read the poem with a friend and take turns reading and listening with the eyes closed, visualizing what is happening. Okay, go guys. Okay, the next step is to analyze. When we analyze, we just focus on one verse at a time. So we're no longer looking at sentences in the organized stage, we're looking at whole verses. We need to think of all the possible meanings each line has and its connection to the other lines in the verse. So each line in context with the verse, okay? We need to think of questions if we're finding it hard. So what does he mean by uh, white array? What does he mean by this? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this. So think of questions to ask your, um, ask your group members if you're finding it confusing. And pay attention to repetition or adjective combinations. Okay, let's try it. Look into my glass and view my wasting skin and say, would God it came to pass, my heart has shrunk as thin. So that sentence that is highlighted, I think is the most important sentence in there. Okay, let's figure out what it means. I've highlighted as for a particular reason, you'll see. If God came, so would God it came to pass, if God came, his heart would not be as shrunken as his skin. The key word is as, and we're using it as a comparison. So find that key word and figure out what that sentence means, okay? 
Okay, now let's focus on what that whole verse means, okay? Including the wasting skin and the glass. So those lines as well, okay? This verse suggests, so we're using tentative language, we're not uh, defining what it means, it's just a guess. This verse suggests that on the outside, from looking in the mirror, he looks like an old man. Even if he was close to death, he would still feel like he had a heart of a younger person. Okay. So do you guys agree with that? Or do you think that's uh, something that you want, might want to debate? Okay. So we can talk about that one in the comments. Sorry, I skipped ahead. Sympathize. So this means to feel like the writer, to get inside their emotions and to feel what they are feeling. So in order to do this, we need to paraphrase. So using those marks to quote exactly what's from the poem in our own words. So we're paraphrasing what the writer is telling us. We're not putting our own opinion into it, but we're using definite language to state what the writer is stating, but using some of our own words, okay? And we're doing this um, with the help of a tool that I've created. Uh, we're placing the letters next to the words or phrases that help us to talk about something we can see, something we can hear, something we can feel, something we can taste, and emotion words, okay? All right, so we're labeling them along here as we're analyzing it. So I'm thinking that Hardy feels shocked with the idea of accepting his own death, endless rest. This is an emotional thing. His heart still throbs as it did at noontide. He feels his heart is still young, but his body is fragile and his skin wasting. This is something that we can feel and something we can see. He speaks to an imaginary voice to justify how he feels. This is hearing. He understands despite this that his heart has also grown cold and he must eventually accept that he will pass away. This is an emotion and it's something that he's feeling. He's feeling his heart is not as strong as it used to be. He wants to do this calmly with equanimity. So he's wanting to calmly accept death and that might be the, the meaning of this poem. So it's coming down to that one sentence about the meaning. This is what I think it means. This is what I think he's meaning, but you guys can debate this. Okay, historicize. So we've already done a lot of work on his biography. Okay, I'll find out when this, uh, when this poem was written. Type it into Google. Okay, first one. I look into my glass was written when Hardy was 57 years old. Now, Hardy uh, lived in the Victorian era. Most people in the Victorian era lived until they were about 60 or 70. So he's only got a few years of his life left. That's what he's reflecting on. Okay, now the last step. Now this is the one where we really find the meaning of the poem. So we talk about our own opinions and we use direct language now that we've had the time to analyze everything. So we analyze what the poem is saying to us and uh, what advice the poem is giving to us and what we can learn from the poem. I've already highlighted some of these in the sympathize stage, okay? So, what is it saying to me? Older people can still feel young in their hearts and they feel the same emotions as young people. What, is, what advice is it giving me? Um, that I need to accept change, aging and death at some point in my life. And what can I learn? Um, I can learn that I should be calm, that change, death and aging happens to everyone. So something that you can learn uh, is like a big life lesson. Think of society and other people. Okay, let's review. Summarize means put the verbs into one sentence. Organize, unpack the nouns and noun clauses. Visualize means picture what happens in your mind. Analyze, guess what each line and verse means. Paraphrase, so this is what the author feels. Historicize, find out more information about context and advise, what is the poem teaching you? Okay, have you got that guys? Okay, it's almost time to go. Next time you analyze a Thomas Hardy poem in class, try this method. Good luck guys.